From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of cultures, traditions, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Namaskar viewers, welcome back to another episode of My India. I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra and in today's episode, we're going to offer you a glimpse into India's cultures, diversity along with the developments happening in and around the world. Buddhism is not just a religion but a way of living that guides humanity towards a more compassionate and interconnected world. Today in our show, we'll give you a glimpse of the recently held General Assembly meeting of the International Buddhist Confederation, IBC, held in India's capital, New Delhi, which was joined by monks from across 26 countries. Let's take a look. The diversity of India is its speciality, whether it be cultural, regional, linguistic or religious diversity. All these together make India stand out from the rest of the world. Wherein, religions play a pivotal role in guiding humanity towards a more compassionate, mindful and interconnected world. Buddhism is one such fastest growing religion in India, which is striving to guide mankind and the world with its noble thoughts and ideas to attain enlightenment in the face of contemporary challenges. Buddhism was found by Siddharth Gautam, also called Buddha, in India over 2,500 years ago. Gautam Buddha was born in 623 BC in the Lumbini province of southern Nepal. In the search for the answers to his problems of suffering, Buddha dwelled in many places and eventually got enlightenment underneath the Bodhi tree in Gaya in India's Bihar state. In a bid to carry on Buddha's legacy, recently the International Buddhist Confederation IBC, a global Buddhist platform, carried out its General Assembly meeting in New Delhi which was joined by senior monks from across 26 countries. Buddhism is an Indian tradition, uh, an Indian religion, an Indian philosophical tradition, we could say. The teachings that they have conveyed in America have all come from Lord Buddha, who came from India. Buddhism is one of the world's oldest religions with a rich history and tradition and has traveled to many countries so far, such as Myanmar, Mongolia, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand and China. As Buddhism travelled, it adopted the values and traditions of the countries within itself as well as its original essence and which is why today we see sects like the Theravada, Mahayana, Hinayas and the Vajrayana. The IBC in a way amplifies Buddhism thoughts and their integrated perspectives to maintain peace and harmony by bringing both Buddhist and non-Buddhist organizations together. The world that we are living now, I mean, is very complex. There is a lot of violence. We live in very difficult times. Uh, but we have an advantage that the Buddha's teachings are universal. And so we need to take what is universal from the Buddha's teachings and bring this to different parts of the world and teach people. One of the principles of Buddhism is non-violence. Buddhists believe that the universe is governed by natural laws and the only way to attain nirvana or enlightenment is kindness, generosity and forgiveness. Though Buddha's principle of non-violence always remains the core part of the goal of Buddhism. I see Buddhism connecting me with my country, which is, I'm German, but I live in the UK at the moment. Um, I see it connecting me that an, um, a philosophy that originated in India um, 
has changed my life as a German means that it, Buddhism is something that can apply and improve the quality of life and the life of every human being on earth. Buddhism has so much to teach us. Um, we have the concept of wisdom of com and compassion as the two legs on which Buddhism stands. The two-day IBC event brought together patriots of Buddhist sons, senior monks and the Dhamma practitioners from across the world, who have been associated with IBC since its founding days. The event was aimed at electing officers bearers of the world body for the next three years. The General Assembly is a very important body. Uh, as uh, you know, the International Buddhist Confederation is an international uh, organization. Uh, so we have representative, uh, representatives from different countries, about 39 countries, 300 organizations, uh, in order to enable them to have a participatory role and a sense of belonging to IBC, which is our core objective and aim, you know, to bring the entire world, the Buddhist community together. We have formed this General Assembly. The teachings of Buddhism not only inspire one to follow the path of righteousness, but also give a huge perspective on life and make living easier through its eightfold practices, including right intention, right livelihood, and right effort to attain nirvana, which is enlightenment. We all must be familiar with the term millet, but not many are aware of its nutritional value. Millet, the exceptional food grain that can survive extreme climatic conditions, has the potential to ensure food security in India. Its demand is rapidly growing in the global market today. In this spirit, recently, the Indian mission to ASEAN, along with the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare, launched the ASEAN Indian Millet Festival 2023 in Indonesia in order to raise awareness and create a market for millet-based products. Let's have a look. India is often considered an agro-based country with the agriculture industry accounting for 20% of the GDP of the nation. India's agriculture sector continues to grow, proving its potential on the global platform with its high-value nutritional products. Millet is one such agricultural product of India that is now gaining recognition worldwide for its high nutritional value and easy to tolerate temperature conditions. Today, India is dwelling on the path to leading the world as a key player in the global supply chain of millet and its value-added products. According to a PIB report, India exported 64 million US dollars worth of millets in the year 2021-22. Moreover, the Indian government is currently supporting more than 200 startups to develop a range of millet-based value-added products, ready to eat, ready to cook and ready to serve products for all age groups. In a bid to raise awareness and create a market for millet and its products recently, the Indian mission to ASEAN along with the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare launched ASEAN India Millet Festival 2023 in Indonesia. I think the movement has just begun because of uh, really promoting, the government of India has really promoted not only startups, farmers, the entire movement, uh, the food industry. So I think since the movement has just become, it's just going to grow, especially the export industry. It's an excellent initiative to support startups of India. We are one of the uh, leading st uh, millet startups in India. We are based out of Mumbai, but we work with different small-scale farmers across India. So what we do is that we create value chains end-to-end -end with different groups and we source millets and we're doing value-added products. The event followed a number of cultural programs by Indian and Indonesian performers who showcase their culture through their artistic performances, promoting cultural exchange between the two countries. During the event, both Indian and Indonesian entrepreneurs were found educating and exhibiting their millet-based products to the people who visited their stalls. Millet in Indonesia is uh, underutilized crop in India. In this event, it's good to promote biodiversity plasma nutfa in jemplasem in underutilized crop in here. Uh, a long time ago, this is common in Indonesia. 
and this uh, related with uh, local local knowledge. But when the paddy come and then the all Indonesia is planting for for paddy. The Indian states like Rajasthan, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh together form the major millet growing states in India, which produce a wide variety of millets like pearl millet, sorghum, finger millet and minor millets such as proso, kodo, foxtail millet and buckwheat. Whereas the major importing countries are Nepal, UAE and the Saudi Arabia as per PIB 2021 to 22 report. Earlier during the G20 summit in September, Prime Minister Modi also emphasized strengthening the production of nutritional grains including millet to ensure food security in India. ये जो आसियान इंडिया मिलेट फेस्टिवल है ये जो हम इंटरनेशनल ईयर ऑफ मिलेट जो सेलिब्रेट कर रहे हैं उसके अंतर्गत हो रहा है और जैसे कि आप जानते हैं आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी यहां पे 7 सितंबर को आए थे आसियान इंडिया समिट के लिए तो एक जॉइंट स्टेटमेंट जो था वो फूड सिक्योरिटी के बारे में था और आप देखिए अभी 2 महीने पहले हमने जॉइंट स्टेटमेंट अभी इशू किया है अडॉप्ट किया है हमारे लीडर्स ने और उसके बाद हम यहां पे मिलेट फेस्टिवल लगा रहे हैं यू नो इसकी न्यूट्रिशियस वैल्यू है इसका यू नो हमारी लीडरशिप बार-बार कहती है कि वाटर कंजम्पशन कम है इसका कार्बन फुटप्रिंट कम है द वर्ल्ड नेवर न्यू द वर्थ ऑफ दिस हाईली न्यूट्रिशियस ग्रेन अनटिल टुडे मिलेट वाज लॉन्ग इग्नोर्ड and limited due to a lack of awareness of its nutritional values however today with the concerted efforts of the indian government the millet has established its unique identity on the global platform and now some of the stories that made news recently After 17 days of non-stop operation the 41 workers have been evacuated from the Silkyara tunnel Uttarakhand CM Pushkar Dhami met the workers and welcomed them with garlands of flowers PM Modi called it an emotional moment and also wished for the well-being of the evacuated workers Meanwhile locals distributed sweets outside the Silkyara tunnel as trapped workers were rescued from the tunnel All the workers have been rushed to the hospital for further medical examinations. The unfortunate incident occurred on November 12 after a portion of the under construction tunnel collapsed on the Silkyara side. Hours after the safe evacuation of 41 trapped workers from the Silkyara tunnel on November 28, Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke to the rescued men over the phone. All 41 men who were rescued from the collapsed tunnel after 17 days have been brought to the community health center in Chiniali Sor for primary medical treatment. Earlier in the day Prime Minister Modi had called Uttarakhand Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami and gave his best wishes for the safe evacuation of 41 workers from the Silkyara tunnel. During this PM Modi took information from the Chief Minister about the workers reacting to the safe rescue of the workers. PM Modi praised the bravery and determination of rescuers involved in the Silkyara tunnel operation saying that they have given new life to the laborers who were trapped in the tunnel for the last 16 days adding that the mission has set an example of humanity and teamwork In a breathtaking spectacle on Kartik Purnima evening the ghats of Kashi were transformed into a celestial haven illuminated with 21 lakh earthen lamps simultaneously Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath inaugurated the celebrations by lighting the first lamp on Dev Diwali The event attended by common citizens and dignitaries including ambassadors from 70 countries 150 delegates and their families showcased the splendor of Kashi on the occasion of Dev Diwali The troops of Indian and Sri Lankan armies underwent joint tactical drills at the College of Military Engineering in Pune. As a part of exercise Mitra Shakti 2023, the troops of Indian and Sri Lankan armies underwent joint tactical drills. The exercise is being conducted from November 16 to 29. The Indian contingent of 120 personnel is represented mainly by troops from the Maratha Light Infantry Regiment. 
the Sri Lankan side is being represented by personnel from the 53 Infantry Division. The aim of the exercise is to jointly rehearse the conduct of sub-conventional operations under Charter 7 of the United Nations Charter. Moving on, the week marked the celebration of Guru Nanak Jayanti, also known as Gurpurab, as Sikh around the world commemorated the birth anniversary of Guru Nanak Dev Ji, the founder of the Sikh religion on November 27. Gathered in large numbers, devotees throng the sacred sites for the spiritual celebrations. According to Sikh literature, Guru Nanak's birth anniversary is observed on the full moon day of the Indian lunar month of Kartik. Take a look. In India, culture is the customs, beliefs, values and traditions followed by a group of people. It is carried down through generations, shaping our perceptions of the world and our place within it. While India is a secular state, religion plays a central part in the culture of the country. Sikhism is a progressive religion, well ahead of its time when it was founded over 500 years ago. Sikhism preaches a message of devotion and remembrance of God at all times, truthful living, equality for mankind and denounces superstitions and blind rituals. The birthday of Guru Nanak Dev Ji, the first Sikh Guru, is the largest and most revered celebration in the Sikh community. Around the world, devotees rejoice greatly on this day as Guru Nanak Jayanti, also known as Gurpura. कि गुरु नानक जी का संदेश है ह्यूमैनिटी तो हमें सेवा करनी चाहिए लोगों की लोगों की लाइफ को लाइट से भरना चाहिए रोशनी से भरना चाहिए ताकि सबके जीवन में खुशियां आ सके गुरु नानक्स कांसेप्ट ऑफ गॉड इज समड अप इन द मूल मंत्र द फर्स्ट स्टैंजा ऑफ द जापजी द मॉर्निंग प्रेयर सेड बाय गुरु नानक एंड ऑल फॉलोअर्स वर्ल्ड वाइड देयर इज वन गॉड इटर्नल ट्रुथ इन हिज नेम creator of all things and all pervading spirit fearless and without hatred timeless and formless beyond birth and death self created by the grace of the guru he is known the man of the hour guru nanak dev ji was a brilliant spiritual thinker the birthplace of guru nanak dev ji is known as raiboidi talwandi and it is currently located in Pakistan's Sheikhpura city. There is a beautiful site called Nankana Sahib where a Gurudwara was built to celebrate his birthplace. Shri Guru Nanak Dev Maharaj Ji ki Ahmad se Sansar mein Jho Andhera tha Avidya ka Agyanata ka Ye sara chhat gaya Guru Ji ne हमारे मनुष्य जाति में जो जात पात का ऊंच नीच का जो कोहड़ था उसको खत्म कर दिया और अपने ओस पड़ोस में सब के साथ गुरु महाराज की जो प्रकाश गुरपुरब है जो महाराज के अवतार का जो ये पावन पुरब है आप इसकी खुशी सब के साथ बांटे सब के साथ मठियाई दें और सब को बधाई दें ताकि अरदास करें के परमात्मा पूरे संसार में सुख दे और हर मनुष्य खुश रहे सब के परिवार में सुख समृद्धि आए सेलिब्रेशंस फॉर द फेस्टिवल बिगिंस इन गुरुद्वारा टू डेज प्रायर टू द डे ऑफ गुरु नानक जयंती a 48-hour non-stop recitation of the Guru Granth Sahib called Akhand Part is held. A day before Guru Nanak's birthday, a procession called Nagar Kirtan is organized. The procession is led by five men, referred to as Panj Pyare, holding the Sikh triangular flag, Nishan Sahib. The Holy Guru Granth Sahib is placed in a palanquin during the procession. The joyful procession passes through streets decorated with flags and flowers. People sing hymns in groups and play traditional music instruments and also display their martial arts skills.
हर साल ये होता है ये स्पेशली हम साल में एक ही बार करते हैं जब गुरु नानक जी का पूर्व होता है प्रकाश पूर्व बोला जाता है प्रकाश पूर्व होता है तब उनका ये नगर कीर्तन उनका एक खास मैसेज जो है उसको फैलाने के लिए वो संगत को या जो यहाँ के लोग उनको दर्शाने के लिए ये जो आयोजन किया जाता है और इसका एक बड़ी अच्छी तरह से जो है निकाला जाता है यहाँ लोग बाहर से गतका पार्टी आई है जो सिख मार्शल आर्ट का प्रदर्शन करते हैं Guru Nanak Dev Ji is said to believe to start langar that is the name given to a community kitchen. On Guru Nanak Jayanti the processions and celebrations are followed by a langar arranged at gurudwaras by volunteers. Guru Nanak Dev Ji propagated selfless service to humanity, prosperity and social justice for all irrespective of any demographic differences. As we embrace this year's festivities, may the wisdom and teachings of Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji light the way towards a fulfilling and righteous path in life. And now, some of the stories from the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Saudi Arabia's Riyadh won the right to host the Expo 2030 World Fair. Vote results showed in another diplomatic victory for a Gulf country after the Qatar Soccer World Cup last year. South Korea's Busan and Italy's Rome were also in the running to host the World Fair, a five-yearly event that attracts millions of visitors and billions of dollars in investment. Riyadh won 119 votes, Busan 29 and Rome 17. Results from the 182 members of the Paris-based Bureau International Desk Expositions showed Saudi Arabia needed to garner two-thirds of the votes to win from the first round. Riyadh had enlisted soccer star Cristiano Ronaldo, who plays for the Al Nasr Saudi club, to convince members in a video projected before the vote. The Saudi capital has proposed to host the event between October 2030 and March 2031. Paris metro ticket prices will almost double during the 2024 Olympics the French capital region's president said on November 28 adding that residents with passes would be shielded from the temporary rise and visitors would be charged a fair price the mayor of Paris warned last week that public transport services which are provided by the regional authority would be insufficient during the events the Olympics will be held from July 26 to August 11 and the Paralympics from August 28 to September 8 a monthly pass normally costs 84.10 euros while single journeys currently cost 2.10 euros last week paris mayor hit out at pecres saying the french capital would not be ready to, in terms of transport transport minister clement beyond back pecres on november 28 saying paris would be ready adding that it is important that there are no changes for the parisians during the games on the first full moon of november thais partake in the loy krathong festival an age old tradition of gratitude towards the river deity for its provision of water and a gesture of remorse for polluting the waters typically festivities involve the floating krathong ornate baskets crafted from flowers and banana trunks however the influx of participants floating these offerings leads to river pollution as the debris drifts into the sea bangkok officials said about 600000 physical krathong floated down the chao phraya river on the festival night this year underscoring the popularity of this celebration amid discourse regarding its ecological implications Here visitors craft a drawing of their personalized krathong and make wishes before scanning them into a digital system that creates colorful projections of krathong on the canal surface. Official numbers showed over 3000 digitally projected krathong illuminated the night during the festival offering a sustainable alternative to the traditional practice. The festival of Loy Krathong has for years been a point of debate between environmental activists and those dedicated to preserving tradition 
the Krathong cleanup exercise took place for the second consecutive year and aims to uphold the deeply entrenched tradition while promoting waste management practices. And lastly, let's take you to the vibrant state of Odisha, which recently celebrated Boita Bandana, a boat festival that commemorates the maritime glory of the eastern Indian state. Let's have a look. Odisha, often known for its unique culture and vibrant traditions, has unfolded yet again a very unusual festive celebration. Boeta Bandana is a boat festival that commemorates the maritime glory of Odisha. The festival is observed on the occasion of Kartik Purnima. Every year, on the full moon day of the Kartik month, people in large numbers gather at the water bodies to set miniature boats on the water's surface. Boeta Bandana generally falls between October and November month. This Boito Madana celebrates thousands of years of India's special ties with trade relations with Bali. When uh, traders used to go to Bali, the trading community. So that is what we cherish, uh, putting the boats afloat in the water every year. So we feel proud to be Odia celebrating of our tra trade relations, which our ancestors did in those days. This historical event is commemorated by the symbolic floating miniature boats made of banana stems, paper and coloured cloth in waters like rivers, ponds and seas. The ritual pays homage to the rich maritime history of the region and the brave sailors who ventured into the sea for trade. It is believed that merchants used to set sail on Boetas to trade with countries like Java, Sumatra, Bali and Indonesia. The festival is rooted in the historical significance of Odisha as a major maritime power in ancient times. The decorated miniature boats are set afloat with offerings of lamps, flowers and prasad as a gesture of remembrance and gratitude to the sea god Varun. हम लोग प्रेयर करते हैं बोट को ये सुख कामना देके डालते हैं कि हमारे जो जिंदगी है वो सुख में जाए हमारे ट्रेडिशन के लोग ये मानते हैं कि वन मंथ विदाउट नॉन वेज विदाउट वनियन एंड गार्लिक दे डू द हॉबी सो एंड ऑल सो दिस इज अ वे ऑफ सेलिब्रेटिंग देयर वन मंथ सैक्रिफाइस and also the return of those traders. Festivals like these showcase India's rich and unique traditions cultivated for years in every corner. Meanwhile, they also give people a break from everyday chores and an opportunity to connect with their families and friends. That's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback on myindia at anin.com. I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra and it's a goodbye from the entire production team.